Hey everybody, welcome to this video on a short introduction to Django Ninja. I'm your host, Nafil Islam, a developer advocate at Sona. So you might be asking, what is Django Ninja? Well, Django Ninja is a framework built on top of Django that allows you to get a lot of the goodies that you expect from something like FastAPI. And what do I mean by this? Well, in FastAPI, you have the ability to set schemas and to use normal Python type annotations to determine your data types when you're receiving requests. And what Django Ninja does, just like FastAPI, is also verify that those types are correct. It also gives you an open API explorer so you can see exactly what is expected of a particular route. So instead of talking about all of this, let's dive in. The first thing that we're going to do is effectively create a virtual environment. And once we've activated our virtual environment, we are going to install Django Ninja with a simple pip install. Now, this doesn't really get any simpler. Just like you would install Django, you can install Django Ninja, and it automatically installs Django in the background. Now, you could start a project using Django Admin, just like you would do a normal Django project. And in this case, we are going to call it API Demo. Now that this is created, let's just take a look at what we have with a simple tree. And we can see that everything that we expect to be there is there. Now, before we show you how to do everything in a proper Django Ninja structure, let's just do this the simplest way we can, where we add a path, we import the Ninja API class, and we declare an API. And once we do this, we should be able to get our API running. So we will just add a simple route to the whole thing. We're going to call it add. It's basically going to take in two parameters, A and B, and it's going to add A and B together. The result is going to be a dictionary, which will get serialized into JSON, so we don't have to worry about stuff like that. Okay, now that we have our mighty API almost ready to go, what we're going to do is just use Python manage.py run server to run this thing. And we should be able to go into API slash docs, and we should be able to execute this query, and we should be able to get the right result. All of this is provided for you out of the box in Django Ninja. But this really isn't how you're supposed to structure your Django Ninja project. So we're going to create an API.py file and just put in all the stuff that we have in our URLs.py in a more structured manner. And once we have, what we can do is just do a relative import, import all the URLs that we care about, and then we should be able to run it just the same. But it's not going to work because I haven't really added anything into API.py. So let's do that now. And what is interesting to notice here is that as I complete this route, when we refresh the API docs, we should be able to run it as we did before. So everything that you do is reflected in the docs in real time. Even if we were to add something like name and we wanted it to be a string and we had it as a default argument, when we do a return message in a string and we have that, you are going to see this reflected inside of the documentation ASAP. We can even go ahead and try it out. So we can change the name and I can change it to my own name at an exclamation mark and we're going to see a different response body. We can do something slightly a bit more involved. We can do some math and we can create a function that takes in two parameters and we can make sure that these are integers. And of course, when we return their addition, subtraction, and multiplication, what's going to happen is that this two will be reflected in the docs immediately after we finish writing the function. And once we run this and try this out, we can see that this works just as you would expect and it's already inside our API slash docs route. Now let's do something a little bit more involved. Let's actually declare a proper schema, which is going to be taken in as a JSON object, and we're going to inherit from schema, and we're going to give it a couple of attributes. Now some attributes are going to be simple, like your first name and your last name. These things are going to be pretty simple. However, 
we can also have more complex attributes. So first name, last name, and age, which is going to be an integer, is going to be simple. But we can set location as a geographic coordinate, which is going to be a tuple that has two floats in it. So we can actually set that pretty easily by using tuple. And we're going to use tuple with a capital T here because we're going to use the type. And we're going to say we want a float and a float. And of course, I'm going to have to import this from typing.tuple. Of course, I'm going to set the default as 0.0, .0 .0 and 0.0. .0. All good. Now, let's try this out when we actually want to register this person. So we are going to take in the person schema as the input. Of course, I'm going to have to put in the request as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in request, the person schema, and then we're going to say, hey, this person has been registered. And lastly, I'm going to add this to my API. And all the errors should be gone now. And once I refresh this, I should be able to see API slash register underscore person. It gives me an example of what schema is expected. And I can even try it out. So I can put in my name. And I can set my age. And of course, I can set my location to where it is. And that should do it. Everything was successful. Subject Nafiel registered with the API. Everything is good. But let's see if we can play around a little bit. So let's change something in location. And we are going to put the second argument as a string. And we're going to see that that has been captured as an error. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun to do. And if you want more videos on Django Ninja, please let us know in the comments. I'll see you again in the next one.